Today, we look at number 80 of the biblical truth of our hymn. Today, Jesus loves even me. Last week, we did Jesus loves me. You remember that hymn was written for a dying young child. Jesus loves even me, Philip Bliss. And it said that the hymn Jesus loves me was written and composed by Bliss after attending a meeting where it was sung, Oh, How I Love Jesus, was sung often. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. He thought, Have I not been singing enough about my poor love for Jesus? Shall I not rather sing of his great love for me? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I see nothing wrong with oh how I love Jesus I don't see anything wrong with this hymn but yeah, personally I don't like Philip Bliss's work and I could be wrong I mean it's not a sin to have you know your own preferences uh, I just don't really like that comment that he made because it's a wonderful song. Oh, how I love Jesus. So let's look at Jesus loves even me. I am so glad that our fathers in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. And it comes from the Bible. How else would we know about the love of God without the scriptures? What would we truly know about Jesus outside from the fiction that man has written? There are pictures posted all around of Jesus and that's not what Jesus looked like. There are stories all around about Jesus that are not so and not true. And yet the Bible tells us, the King James 1611 Bible tells us, we have no other authority but God's authority. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, a writing gives us the word of God. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. Page and page after page after page. And it excites me more. And I'm going to say about 1988, I began actually reading the Bible all the way through. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And through my studies of the Bible and I've come to read the Bible more than just throughout the year. And I'm amazed that when I go through the Bible reading, I see something new that I did not see last time. It's growing in grace. It's growing in the Lord to see, wow, each and every time. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever life, everlasting life. And we love him because he first loved me, the sign that's behind me. God is love. And let me tell you, if you don't know God, you don't know love. Because Jesus said, if you're not of God, you're the fa your father the devil. And the devil has no love at all. He's lacking. Desperately. So unsaved people, I love you, you love me, I love you, true love forever. They don't have any idea what love is. And the very foundation of the love of God in Jesus is for God so loved the world. 
That's charity. It's giving. Though I forget him and wander away, and don't we all? You know why we sin? I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I have been washed, adopted into God's family since April 21st, 1987. Has that stopped me from sinning? Absolutely not. I'm sorry to say I sin. I'm not going to tell you. I confess my sins to God through Jesus Christ alone. I don't go to no man. But what causes us to sin? And there was one time I had one reasoning. And maybe two or three. Two and three might be combined. The number one is what he says. Though I forget him and wander away. We sin because we just don't even think about God and have God not in our knowledge. <clears throat> thy word have I sinned in, uh, thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And then there's times now I've added that we sin and we know what we're doing. And we're still doing it. Outside even the Holy Spirit speaking to us with the scriptures. And number three, which I don't know was part two, is we just don't care about what God. I'm talking about Christian, born again Christian. They've grown so cold to the scripture that I'm going to do it no matter what. And I got a, a sin. That I do. And I, I, there are times I don't want to do it and I fight it. There's times I'm in the process and I stop. And there are other times I know what I'm doing. Lust of the flesh. But I feel guilty afterwards even when I want to do it. We sin because we have taken God out of our life or we have disregarded the scriptures. I would think that is the possibly two. And like I said, the third one would be the part number two or, or it's in a class of its own. We just don't care anymore. We're going to do it. And I thank God I have not come to part three. I mean, I like I said, I know I'm doing the sin. And I repent afterwards. And I'm broken hard about it afterwards. I have not got to the point with the sin to say, you know, God, I don't care what you feel anymore. I'm going to do it and just do it. I haven't got to that point, thank God. May God prevent me. But I've done things, you know, not even think, thinking about God. The devil's throwing stuff in front of me. And then, oh, you know what? I wasn't supposed to do that. Still, he does love me. Wherever I stray. That's. I don't know how hard that is for some people. There are some people who they can't. Forgive. Now I had somebody do a violent act against me and my family. And they wrote to me and they said. Oh, listen, I just ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry, it was wrong, I've sinned, and every and downright absolute repentance. I wrote that person back and said, okay, I, I, yeah, I forgive you. But I cannot say I, I forget. The big difference between forgiving and forgetting. Forgiving is like, no bother. <coughs> no bother. It's okay between you and me. Forgetting. That's hard. I'm 51 years old and I forget things that are good. And I remember things that are bad. 
There are people in my church now, I can't remember their name. There are stuff I should know, I don't know. And then when I go walking through the grocery store, and I start singing to the lyrics of the music overhead because I remember those words. Forgiving and forgetting. And yet God in his attitude can do both. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Realize when God forgives me of a sin that I confess before him and apply it to the blood of Jesus Christ. Realize it, things are right between you and me now, son. And then later on the devil says, well, what about that? And I go to the Father and say, Father, you know, uh, I did this and I was wrong. And the Father answers from heaven. We don't hear him audibly, but he answers from heaven. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. As the other great hymn, what sins are you talking about? Well, Father, the sin that I, it's under the blood. It's forgiven. And it's forgotten. Only those sins that have not been confessed, is not put under the blood, are not forgiven and not forgotten. That person, that I, I forgive him. I'm helping. It's hard to forget. I hope, as long as the Lord will give me to live, I hope maybe eventually I, for, I would forget. But all the stupid things I forget and forgot. You know that, you, you get up and you go in the kitchen, you open the refrigerator. What? Oh man, what was I in here for? I remember what that person said to me. That was cruel. Not only that was 10 years ago. You can't remember that you went into a refrigerator you know, for something you wanted, and you got to remember something that was said 10 years ago? Five years ago? Something that was done two years ago? Something that happened when you were a child? Forgiving and forgetting. Man, I wish we could control. For James said, you can't control your tongue. I wish I can control my forgetting. You say, what would you do? Man, I would put the button on and say, scripture memorization. I would remember that. And all that other music, that worldly music, turn that off. Names for people in my church. Remember them names. Remember the evil people that I dealt with in my life. Remember them enough to pray for them and then turn them off. God is a wonderful, almighty God that he does both. I forgive you if you confess it and I forgot about it. And a lot of times I can tell God, you know, I know you forgot, but I feel guilty. Because I remember. There are times that the devil will throw a sin at me. And I will say to the Lord, Lord, I'm confident. I don't, I really don't know that this is under the blood. I really don't know. And if it is, Lord, you don't know what I'm talking about. You've already forgiven me. But Lord, in case, just in case, I have not confessed this sin. I'm doing it now. I'm not saying that you cannot forgive me, you cannot forget it, but I'm not sure if I put this under the blood. Since I know I've confessed to the Lord, the devil brings him up, myself brings him up, it's under the blood. And then I dwell on it, maybe, maybe, sometimes. Back to his dear, loving arms would I flee. And when we come to the arms of our Savior, what do we see? We see two nail-pierced hands. What do we see? 
we see again the love of God. And I'm telling you, I know people are getting sick and tired of hearing me talk about See, the Lord blesses me. I know Jesus holds my hand. I know G I'm in the arms of Jesus. I know I'm saved. I can't lose it. I love serving the Lord. But when you can't get in the arms of somebody you love, and you don't have anybody to hug, When you become a widower, I know Jesus holds your hand, I know, but that's not physical. I'm going to get off that right now. But have you ever had someone you love, your mom, your dad, a wife, a husband, or even yourself to a child, and you've been mad at them? You're mad. And they want to come and you're like, get away from me. Just get away from me. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we confess our sins and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. God will never do that to us. And when God holds his arms out to us. After our confession, after he cleanses us and forgave us, man, he acts like it never happened again. Never happened. Give me a hug. When I remember that Jesus loves me, and that's the whole reason. Why does God allow sinners to be in his presence and to love, to, well, there's the answer, to save their souls and to adopt them in a family because, you, because he loves us? You go to a, a place, and I don't know what kind of place it is, but they got children up for adoption. And you go there and you have the intent in your heart you want to adopt a child. And you go there and you see the boys or girls. And there's that one specific child there. And that little smile, maybe how cute they are, whatever. And you just fall in love with that. That's the one. I mean, the kid that's over the corner ripping the doll's heads off, destructing other toys, hitting other kids, Sticking his tongue out. And he's just rude and crude. The worldly child. Yeah, you don't got no favor for that. And yet God sees us as that bradley, worldly, disobedient child. Just rebelling. He says, I can do something with him. And then he loves us. He says, come to me to Calvary. And let me clean you up. Why? Because Jesus loves even me. If I were to tell you what my life was be before I got saved, you wouldn't even be listening to me. It wouldn't even be worth even saying anything because guess what? All those sins are under the blood and God doesn't remember them. I do. And I shouldn't. But God doesn't remember. And they were vile, wicked stuff. God doesn't remember me carrying around a bottle of Bacardi. God doesn't remember me cussing. And all the other sins. They're under the blood. Why? Because he loves me. And I often wonder, Lord, why are you going to reward me? Isn't it just enough that you saved my soul and you're bringing me to New Jerusalem? Brand new body, no more... No more shame, no more sin, no more death, no more tears. Isn't that just enough? You're going to give me crowns? Why? Because he loves me. And any Christian that's born again, he loves you. A holy and righteous love. And again, God is love. God not only love, but he's holy. 
and he's righteous, and he's pure, he's without lies. You pick up a radio station and you start hearing love this, love that, I love you, love, love. That's all lies. But when God says, and let, let me speak as far as God, I'm not changing the script, but for I love the world, I gave my son. I am holy. God, not me. I am righteous. I am love. I am, I am peace, I am joy, I am long-suffering, I am patience. I know how to love you, God speaking. And we sin in the Lord. We, though we, we, you know, we wander out of the way. Said, though we sin, says God, I know I love you. And love can look over a who and what we are. And one day he'll change that. In a moment, a twinkle of eye, we all shall be changed. Why? He loves us. Get up here to your, to your home now. Here's your mansion. Let me wipe off all those stains. Let me get off the filth off you and make you clean. And that's remarkable. And when you got Jesus loves even me, no human being can fathom what that love is. And people have been mistaking me, oh, you know, I don't love Jesus, I don't love God because I'm looking for a wife. I absolutely love God. And God loves me. And I am absent without a physical love. And that the love of God is he gave me two great wonderful women and he gave me the patience and everything that they, their, their medical issues and taking care of me. And he hears me. You think Satan listens to you? You know, we go on the streets and public meetings. We got here at least once a month. Satan rules. Yeah, does he take care of you? Never mind that. I read the end of the book. I know what happens. To but does Satan love you? Take care of you? How many Satan daughters out there who've gotten pregnant and Satan's men have, I'll see you later, bye. And then Satan's worldly children grow up without any father or anything like that. You know, you know, what, you know what God says? He says, love your wife. Yeah, I know she's a pain in the neck. You are too. That's why I tell her to love you. Because God in his love has told us that Jesus loves even me. He's telling you, you got to love that wife. And don't come natural. You got to tell that wife, you better love that husband. And it says in Titus that the old, the age women or the older women are to teach younger women how to love their husbands and how to love their children. Love does not come natural to us. And yet the love of God is natural. I'll take that little screaming little brat over there breaking the doll's head and he's just kicking the other. I'll take that because I love him and I will change him for my honor and my glory. And when I have sinned against God, I, I am a born again Christian and I still sin against God. And I come to God and I say, God, I'm sorry I did that. I know I did that, Lord, and I know it's wrong. And Lord, I, I can't help myself. I may not have felt guilty before in doing it, but I feel guilty now. And then another part of God's love, and I know we're getting much into this thing that Jesus loves me. How about this fact? When God says, okay, son, you did wrong? Yes, Lord. I got to chastise you. Gabriel, hand me the rod. <laughs> You guys say, uh oh. But doesn't Hebrews say that he loves us where he chastises us? Doesn't Hebrews say that as far as the devil's children, he leaves them alone? Now, if I go in Walmart and there's a bratty child there, or I go in the, in the toy store and there's a bratty, I don't have the right to take that child and do anything with him. I can yell at him. I usually yell at the mother or the father, but. I have nothing to do with that child. That child ain't mine. 
but you get my child. Why? Because I love them and I want them to do right and I want them to live for Jesus. And you know, it's a true fact. And if you're a parent, you know it does hurt you more than it hurts them. How about God and his love for us that he opens up those arms after he chastises them? Come here. I told my children, I said, listen, this is your sin that I'm chastising you. Send over. And you don't need. Then they get up, they're crying. They start crying before I even say anything. And they'll start crying. Uh, I don't give them as much as they should give. Because I love them. But I love them to do it. And I, I come, I put my arms around. So, you know, I love inner bones, liver, and get snot all over it. And if as a father that loves his children as I do, and you probably love your children too, isn't it? Haven't we ever realized what God feels? Our father is he not our father per se? I gotta do something to whatever he does, money, whatever he does to chastise us. And think about how much it hurts God. And then think of how much the devil's happy. Can you imagine when the devil goes up Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2? Father, you see what Stalley did? And God the Father looks over to the Son. Father? Yes, Son? It's been confessed. I don't even know what the devil's talking about. As far as the east and the west. And that brings glory and honor to God. That's my son. Uh, let's give him a little extra reward. Let's give him a happy day. Maybe that promote. But, you know, I'm not saying, you know, that God, you know, name it, claim it. I'm just saying sometimes God gives us blessings. Because, you know what? That's my boy. You see that? You know what? Like, like you know, you got you got your child's picture there. It's like, that's my boy. And he's wearing a uniform. He's in the military. But that's my boy. You know, he's got... And sometimes when we put the devil to shame... It, it, God, I think that's my boy. That's your father. God the Father. That's my boy. Or the devil comes up, Job 1 and 2, he says, Father, you see what he did? Father looks over to the son. Father. He's guilty. And the father looks at the devil and the devil's got that smile. What has happened? And God has to chastise us because the devil can't win. The father's got to tell the devil, listen, I love my children enough. That guy don't repent. I'm going to take care of you. You don't take care of your people, Satan. You let them go off to hell. You don't care. I do. Jesus loves even me. And the devil probably even languishes the moment. Uh, look what you did to me. Look, look, God, they're, they're angry. They're upset at you. And, you know, they're crying. Ha, 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 ha. And God says, come here. Put your arms around me. I did it because I love you. That's the love of God. And the love of God began at Calvary when they beat the crap. I know people don't like that word. They beat the crap out of Jesus that the Bible says that Jesus was even, didn't even look like a man. Never mind these stupid Hollywood movies and these pictures of Jesus on the cross. What is beating the daylights out of Jesus? Isaiah 53 says that's the love of God. Why? Because God didn't want to beat the hell out of me and throw me into hell. That's the love of God. Jesus loves even me. And no matter what I do. And when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, everything that has not been confessed, everything that we've done in, in, in the flesh, wood, hay, or stubble, it burns up. The smoke sets off the heavenly smoke detectors. And that's it. I don't burn. 
I don't do purgatory. Everything for self and the world and not for Jesus and not confess. It burns up at the moment. And I got to look at those eyes of Jesus like. I'm sorry, Father. I know, but it's too late, isn't it? I don't know how many ashes I'm going to have. I don't know how much smoke I'm going to cause. I'm hoping to find gold, silver, and precious stone. Besides the fact that whatever is lost at the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble, I'm still going through the pearly gates of New Jerusalem. Come on, if somebody broke into your house, and we had somebody break in our house, and they came, sat down at my computer, and were looking up some weird stuff. I mean, death. And, uh, they were looking up um, hospice and a Facebook account. They broke through my window, sat in my chair, and Tracy found them. How many of you that would that they transgressed you? Would you invite them back in their house? And yet God says, "You have violated my holiness. You have sinned against me." You have sinned. But it's under the blood. I forgive you. I love you. It's been burnt up with hay or stubble. Come into New Jerusalem. Let me give you a brand new body. Let me give you forever. Let me give you no more death. Let me give you no more sin. Let me wipe you away. Let me wipe those tears away from your eyes. That's love. You know, when when God, we, we got to realize the love of God, is, when God wipes those tears from our eyes, it's Revelation 21 or 22. I forget which one. You know what happened in Revelation 20? We have watched our loved ones and our friends go cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. We will witness that. And for those who have not witnessed to them and, and don't do care about their soul, you're going to be greatly upset. I feel that I have, as far as I believe, and I could be wrong, I have witnessed to everybody in my family, I believe, that I know. And I'm going to be upset at the Great White Throne Judgment when I see my loved ones cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. What's the love of God? It's all over. Come here, son. Let me get my holy hanky out. I know. You tried. You warned them. You went out there. You did exactly what I told you. That's why you got that crown on your head. And I love you for it. Well done, thou bless. Enter thou in the joy of the rest, because I love you. God has given me a mansion. I don't know what that mansion looks like, but a mansion is not a shack. God has given me a wonderful place. I got four walls. A ceiling and a, and a, and a ceiling, ceiling, a ceiling and a floor. He's going to give me a mansion. Why do I deserve it? What that has to do with Because he loves me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing. If you can sing only one song. If, if somehow I were to be told, I'm going to get rid of your voice, Stiley. That's it. You're done. But you're allowed to say one last thing. What would you say? I would hope it would be Jesus Christ, I love thee. And then go mute. Do you have a song that's in your heart? You have a hymn? You get mad when you go to the grocery store and you're singing those wicked songs? I get mad. Is there one hymn, one song that, and you know what? I When I read my Bible the other day, sometimes I've got to have a fan. i got to have some kind of, so i got the birds over here to keep me going. Sometimes I'll put on instrumental hymns. And again, I forget. I don't know what the words are sometimes. You know, I'll be sitting and reading my Bible, and I'll be singing my words to the, to the, the instrument. Not the songs of the hymn. I will be singing songs to the Lord. Out of my own heart. And that pleases God. 
I'm trying to think right now. There's one. Oh yeah, I watched Barney Miller, and that's it's a really brass kind of uh, I can't think of broady kind of introduction. You know that, that Louisiana. I can't think of what it's called right now. But even to that B, I, I will be hearing it playing, you know, the, the, the program, and I'll be singing, Jesus is coming. I will take the instruments, I will put the words of Jesus, and that pleases God. I mean, I don't know sometimes if we please God. I don't know, I can't picture, but I can picture God up in heaven looking at the devil like, hmm. <laughs> Listen. The farmer's market I go to, they hire a DJ and have hired DJs and will get a radio somehow to try to blast me out. They will use the devil's music to try to prevent the gospel. And God will look at the devil at a good try. You see that big loud mouth down there? He ain't a loud mouth for you, and he's a loud mouth for me. And they still can hear him. And you hear him? He's praying for the soul of that DJ. He's praying for the musical instruments for a lightning bolt to come down from, from heaven and burn up the guitar and burn up the sound system and turn off the power. But he's praying for the soul of that DJ. And how many times have you come to me and say, I want Styley dead? I guarantee plenty of times. Listen, right now the devil is playing in my life and he's there and he's attacking me and he gets me when I need to and he gets me when I don't need to. This time of widowhood, the devil is attacking me, and he knows how. And only one song I can sing is that song from your heart. Now, you may have thought a, a, a good hymn. Okay, that's good. Think of a good hymn. Maybe it's Jesus Loves Me. Maybe it's Jesus Loves Even Me. Maybe, but have you ever sang to God out of your own, your own words? I've done that many times. When I work for the day newspaper, I sat in my van. I drive four or five hours. It was just me in the van. I had my own tape recorder. I'd be just singing to the Lord. Listening to Bible sermons and just singing to the Lord. When in his beauty, I shall see the great king. The Bible says in Proverbs about the virtuous woman, beauty is vain, not for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you even imagine what did? Forget that worldly crap of paintings out there. No. First of all, Jesus is not American, so you can get rid of Hollywood movies. He's not Italian, so get rid of that Italian junk. He's a short Jew, and he probably had a big nose. And some people, oh, you do. And he's brown skin. And I know churches in New London where I grew up where the, 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 the murals and the, and the stained glass wisdom being a black church has a black Jesus. That ain't him either. But let me tell you now, you don't have to take this, okay? What I'm going to say right now, you can say, I like that. Or you can say, he's full of baloney. This ain't scripture. But I know the Bible says they held him by his feet after the resurrection. Now, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. The beauty. This is what I believe. You don't have to believe it. But I believe when we take our last breath, as my wife's done, I believe you're going to be kneeling. I've heard Christians, I'm going to high fly Jesus. Oh, my main man. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> cool. I think you'll be on your knees. You're going, to, you're going to open up your eyes that moment. And you're going to see ten toes. Brown toes. You're going to look up a little further and you're going to see a foot with a hole in it. Each one. And you're going to grasp because that moment, it's him. And you're going to lowly lift up your hand, your eyes and your head. It's him. There's his leg. And then you're going to see his outstretched arms. And you're going to see the hands with the holes in them. And they're reaching out to pick you up and wrap his arms. Welcome home. And if I can say, oh my God. Yes. Jesus, it's you. I know. 
Welcome home. Well done. Give me a big hug. Can you imagine how beautiful he's going to be at that moment? Glistering white when he was on the mountain transfiguration. And your eyeballs ain't going to blow out any. You know why we got to get a brand new body? Because if we were to see God, our eyeballs would just blow up. The brightness and the wonder of God. When we get into Jerusalem, that, that, that's the walls of that are all different garnishes of stone. And the light of Jesus Christ is going to shine out. And that rainbow around the throne is green. It's just going to be so bright our human eyes can't comprehend it. Too many Christians are going to be, they're going to see Jesus when they die. Who are you? I'm Jesus. You don't look like what that Italian painter painted. Oh come on, Jesus! I I seen that I seen that 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 that, that resurrection movie. I seen four hundred times. I have seen the Passion four hundred times. You don't look like him. I know. Have you not read my Bible? Because the Bible describes Jesus. It gives you the ability to paint in your own head what he looks like, not like an Italian painter. Tis shall my song in eternity be. You got a special song for God? All we're going to do is sing praises of God for all eternity. We'll have a mouth that will never dry up and never get tired. By the way, we go to heaven all about Jesus, not about us. Okay? It's how great thou art, not how great I am. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. A filthy, rotten, scum bag. Isaiah says, our righteousness is filthy rags. You know what those filthy rags picture? It pictures. How can I say it? clean and where do you think you got the expression from she's on the rag the woman's time of her month she's just a big gunk of blood and goo You're filthy come here I love you let me clean you up and he gets the blood of God Acts 20 28 and he washes up and cleans us up and he sets us forth. He gives us a commission. Oh, Come on. Why didn't he hit that ball? Why did he let it be a strikeout? Oh. Oh, he messed up the lines. Of that play. Oh. Yay, look what he did. Oh, right. He gave that gospel jacket as the Holy Spirit told him. Yeah, that's my boy. Oh. I don't believe he did that. Yeah, Satan, I know, I saw it. Get out of here. What? He's put it under the blood? <laughs> Satan, look at that. Look at that. He's on his knees, confessing what you just said. Shut up, Satan. Look at him. Look at him. Holy Spirit, bring down some love, joy, and peace to that soul. Because he loves me. And I love him. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. What are you glad about? What makes you happy? Ha! Sorry, didn't mean to wake you up. Uh, your baseball team's not playing. Your football team's not playing. They're not playing basketball. Ha ha! I'm happy in the Lord and I know it. Clap my hands. All the sports have been shut down. The movie houses are closed up. You're, you're stuck in the house and I got a Bible and I got hymns. I'm rejoicing in Jesus Christ. Yeah, but you want to wipe. Yeah, I know. I got I got problems too. <laughs> I got sadness, but I am happy in the Lord. I gave a gospel track out to the guy at the fish store yesterday, and man, he looked at it like, wow, thank you. And I tell him, this is about Jesus. And I gave a gospel track to the cash hand, and I should put it away, but hey, I'm excited because Jesus loves even me. You know, you know what that means? Go to church. 
And not everybody in church is, is saved, but you go to church and you know you probably know who those are. You look over and say, oh, that guy's a good Christian. But Jesus loves even me. Because you don't know about his life. You know about your life. Get your mind out of what they do and look at what you do and look at the sins that you do and look at the places where you falter. Look at the places where you fall. Look at the places where you failed. Look at the time you have to confess to God and say, God, look, I, I'm sorry. And you still even love me. My pastor don't know. Maybe my spouse don't know. Maybe my children don't. Maybe my, I don't know about my mom. She knew everything. But maybe she did. My mom doesn't know half the stuff I did. God did. And God still loved me. And God will always love me. Because I'm His. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Come on, say it again. Verily, verily. Jesus, say it with me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that he scored the football. No, who cares about pigskin? That, that's, that's unclean in the Bible. I am so glad that, that my actress got that, that award. That's an idol. It's against God. I am so glad that Jesus loves even me because if Jesus didn't love me and if God didn't love me, I'd be going to hell with the devil who don't love me. You are not going to hell if you are saved. Why? Because God loves you. And don't get with that mess they try, you know, God is love. God hates the sinner. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. And why does he cast you into hell? That's not the loving God. The God that takes the sinner and casts him off into hell, that's a holy God. The God that takes a miserable, rotten, style of Hayward with all the rottenness that he did before April 21st and the sins I do after 21st of April 1987. Let me, let, let, I gotta work on that guy. That's the love of God. Jesus loves even me. Those are mighty words. And that's not going to be found on any radio. And it makes me more sick to hear, uh, I'll, I'll give you one name, but there's other names. Uh, Dolly Parton to sing Christmas hymns. You kidding me? You know what that woman just said recently after, uh, uh, Kenny Rogers died. You know what she got up and said? I want to star in Playboy again. And you're going to sing Christian. Shut up. You don't have the heart. You don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Now when I sing Jesus. And I know it. And I believe it. And I know it so. And when I say Jesus loves even me. It's not. Hey look, 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 look how great. No it's like I can't believe he loves me. Because you don't even know half the stuff about me. Thank God, I forgot a lot of stuff about me, but I still remember the, I, the very vile things in my life. Vile. Vile. Wicked. Wicked. I was a wicked, vile sinner in the, ang in the, in the, in the realms of an angry god of fire. I ought to cast that man into hell. That's wicked. My grandma say, come to church. No. Come to church. No. You come to church? No. Finally, she said, come to church. I said, I'll tell you what. Now, this is a violent sin, right? I told my grandma. I said, I'll go to church with you. If you will shut up. Don't you dare ever ask me again. I will go to church. I'm only going to church because I want you to shut up. Now, if I go to church, will you shut up? People never like that testimony. I, that's what I told my grandma. I'll go. You shut up afterwards. I went to church Sunday morning. Believe it or not, I went to church Sunday night. <laughs> and during through the week, I'm like, I don't feel right. It wasn't coronavirus. It was the Holy Spirit. 
I gave my grandma a call. She says, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I just swallowed my pride. I don't know what's happened to me, Grandma, but i got to talk to somebody from that church. <laughs> All right. Gave me a call back. She said, can you be here Saturday? I said, yeah, okay, Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, Joseph Caswell opened up a King James Bible and told me I was going to hell. Showed me the scriptures. I said, I don't want to go to hell. Said, You're going. I said, I don't want to go. He knelt down at my grandma's coffee table. I asked the loving, holy, righteous God. I said, I need to be saved. I need to believe on this Jesus that this guy is telling me because I don't want to go to hell, God. I don't. I don't want to go to hell. April 21st, 1970, afternoon. And I went home that day. I went to take a shower. And yeah, I, I use soap. I do that. We didn't have, you know, the core of virus. You can't find no soap or anything back then. And I'm, I'm standing in the shower, and I'm not going to be gross. This is clean. <laughs> clean. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but I felt... I was clean. The shower was there. And I'm like... I feel so clean, and I'm not talking about my body. I, I feel clean. I feel righteous. Why? Because Jesus loves even me. Are you saved today? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Jesus loves even you. Say it with, say it with me, right? Jesus loves even me. There's some people, you know, oh, he can't love me. I'm so, Jesus loves even me. I'm so wicked and vile. That cup that Jesus took was all sin. He didn't die on that cross for all the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world but you. Or but that sin. I know some preachers, you know, the sin of adultery. You know, he'll save you from adultery too. He'll save you from murder. Look at David. But as born again Bible Christians, can't we say, I'll go through the whole rest of the day. It's, it's quarter to three Florida time. I don't know what it's good to Go about the rest of the day now. Jesus lives even me. Jesus loves even me. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. And see how happy your day will become. You know when you sing about Jesus. You don't make the devil happy. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus. Shall suffer persecution. You get happy in Jesus. Look out. He's going to come. He's going to get you. Not Jesus. Not God. The devil. If anything the devil hates. When a Christian's got. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my. Alright, you really? Come on God, let me out of it. Wait a little bit. I enjoy this. A little while. Wait, wait. I enjoy this. Then. So Jesus loves even me. A wonderful great hymn. I was singing this. I put this in my song book. So thank you very much. Share. Like, get it out, get the word of God out, and if you know if you cut, splice, or you do whatever wrong, that's between you and God, not me. I know what I said. God knows what I said. But let's get the word of God out. And we got a lot more hymns left. We got a whole bunch of hymns left. And this was number eighty. You can go to our YouTube. You can go to our personal webpage, Hayward Family Ministry, or our SoundCloud. And go back get the other seventy nine. There are bad hymns. There are ee hymns. There are excellent hymns. This today is one of them. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless.